My name is George Wegman. I've been diving around the beautiful tropical islands of the Philippines for over 25 years. Even as a child, I was fascinated by the fantastic creatures and the amazing shapes and colors you see underwater. In the course of my career as a diving instructor, I have noticed that divers encounter so many things underwater that after the dive they have difficulty remembering what it was they exactly saw. Also, since we tend to focus on the larger animals like turtles and tunas, we overlook the small, well-hidden creatures that make up the bulk of a coral reef's population. With this video, we would like to show you a sample of the marine life in the Philippines. The film is divided into five segments, each showing a different view of the animals on the reef. Depending on where you are, the same animal can be known under different names. This can be very confusing. That is why we have included the scientific family or species names. This way you can look up these animals in any fish book in any language. The more we learn, the more we enjoy. This philosophy has allowed me to retain my sense of wonder and curiosity after more than 2,500 dives. The more I dive, the more I appreciate the amazing variety of life forms in the oceans. 50 years ago, we didn't have the scuba gear, and 50 years from today, we might not have the animals. So let's go diving now, and let's enjoy the beautiful marine life of the Philippines while we still can. This is what a healthy coral reef looks like. It is the home of all the creatures we'll be meeting. But our story doesn't quite start here. It starts in murky water. Any living thing drifting in the current is plankton. These mostly tiny particles are the beginning of the food chain. This is where the cycle of life begins. Plankton is food for many creatures, both small and large. Plankton is essential for life on our planet, not just as food in the water, but also because it produces oxygen. Did you know that most of the oxygen in the atmosphere is produced not by rainforests, but by plankton? Many people can't imagine that these rock-like structures are alive, but they are. The outside of a coral is covered with tiny little holes. In each hole lives a tiny little animal. These animals are called polyps. It's like an ant's nest or a bee's hive. Of course, it's not the rock that's alive. The rock is their home. Polyps are constantly enlarging their homes which become a coral reef. This is built from calcium carbonate filtered from the water. Only two structures made by living beings on this planet are visible from space, the Great Wall of China and the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Like fields of flowers, soft corals can give a healthy reef beautiful shades of colors. Their name derives from the fact that they have no stiff limestone skeleton. Soft corals are also known as octocorals, due to their eight small feeding arms, unlike the six that hard corals have. These polyps filter out organic materials from the current. All corals live in a symbiosis with algae called zooxanthellae, which also provides them with additional nutrients. These algae are also responsible for the magnificent colors we enjoy about corals. Four hundred fifty million years ago, the most dominant life form on Earth were sponges. These multi-celled sessile animals are among the most efficient filters in nature. To filter out its food, a barrel sponge pumps thousands of liters of water through its body every day. So they not only help keep your dishes clean, but also the oceans. Only a few kinds of sponges have definite forms like the barrel sponge. This can live to 100 years and grow to over 1.5 meters. Sea squirts are also known as ascidians. Amazingly enough, they are classified as vertebrates because they have a vestigial spine. They occur either individually or in colonies. Sea squirts use tiny hairs to pump water through their bodies. Any organic particle then gets filtered out as nourishment. 
Sea squirts take on strange shapes and usually bright colors. One way to identify them is that they pucker up whenever you touch them. One of my dreams in diving has always been to find a pearl in an oyster. This hasn't happened yet, but looking at oysters and clams has revealed to me a different kind of treasure. The soft fleshy tissue at the lip of their shells contains colonies of the algae Suzantele, which are brilliantly colored. If you have a good light, this is a sight you will never forget. Giant clams can grow over 1.5 meters across and may live to be 200 years old. Although they might appear to be plants, gorgonians are animals. A good way to judge the direction of currents in an area is to look at the way they grow. These soft corals look very similar to sea fans and like all corals are filter feeders. They can grow up to three meters across and come in different colors. One way of describing fire coral is to call them jellyfish that got tired of swimming around. They reproduce themselves in the same manner. Also, these coral-like animals have specialized defense polyps with the same stinging cells as jellyfish. They can grow in a variety of shapes and forms but are always brownish red with white to beige tips. It is a good idea not to touch any kind of coral, especially this kind unless you want to find out firsthand how it got the name fire coral. The frogfish, which is probably the ugliest fish in the ocean, is also one of the most unique animals. It is not rare at all, but usually so well hidden and so immobile that most divers will not recognize it even if it is right in front of them. It is rare to see a frogfish swimming, and they are very sluggish swimmers. Their fins have evolved into legs, which they use to brace themselves into a perfect ambush position. They dangle a piece of skin as a lure in front of their mouths, much in the same way a fisherman will use a line, hook, and bait. Any fish biting at this lure will experience the fastest movement in the animal kingdom. In six milliseconds, the frogfish will suck in its prey. To an observer, the eaten fish will simply have disappeared. No other creature, whether on land, in the air, or underwater, can move so fast. This common reef fish is characterized by two unique barbels located on the tip of its chin. These sensory organs, which are equipped with taste buds, are used to churn up the bottom in search of small fish or invertebrates upon which the goatfish feed. These barbels are also strong enough to turn over rocks and small corals. Like human males who sometimes wear a mustache to make themselves appear more masculine, the barbels of the male goatfish are displayed in courtship rituals to attract the interest of the female. These elongated fish are not named for their musical abilities or the sounds they make underwater. Trumpet fish are vertically oriented in their hunting methods and unlike most fish can spear straight down to catch their prey. In most reefs they occur in two colors, either camouflage green or less frequently bright yellow. They are distantly related to seahorses. Seahorses are small bizarrely shaped creatures which look very much like the night figure in chessboard sets. They commonly inhabit seagrass beds where there is not much current. They anchor themselves with their flexible tails to plants or corals and eat plankton and other smaller creatures which drift by. Pipefish are closely related to seahorses but have a long sleek striped body with a round paddle-like tail. Both the seahorse and the pipefish share an amazing reproductive method wherein the female deposits her eggs in the brooding pouch of a male which is like the pouch of a kangaroo. It is then the male who carries the eggs until they hatch. Ghost pipefish are extremely rare and exceptionally well camouflaged creatures. Their small size and bizarre form makes them hard to find. Being able to take a good picture of them makes any underwater photographer's heart beat faster. 
Although slow swimmers, they can be found in areas with strong currents. They hover in the vicinity of feather stars, sea fans, corals, or seagrass, with their heads down and facing the current. This allows them to nourish themselves from plankton drifting by. Often you will see two of them together. It is not yet known whether they are officially married or not. Slow but maneuverable with tiny pectoral fins, pufferfish are usually found hiding on the bottom during the day and are active at dawn and dusk. Unfortunately, many divers think it is great fun to pull on the tail of this animal because it then reacts by sucking its stomach so full of water that it can more than double its body size. This puffing up would stress out a pufferfish and could even cause it to die. So please don't do this. When puffed up, any potential predator would find it hard to swallow. Some unlucky sharks have even suffocated because a pufferfish inflated itself in the shark's mouth. There is such a big difference between juvenile and adult sweet lips that for a long time marine biologists thought that they were two different species of fish. Juvenile sweet lips are often seen in the shallow areas of a coral reef. They have bright spots with disproportionately large fins and they swim around like Spanish flamenco dancers. Adult sweet lips school together during the day for protection and are a common sight on reef crests. Due to their distinctive stripes and coloring, sweet lips are a favorite photo subject. They are night active hunters who eat mostly bottom dwelling invertebrates. Anemone fish are a well loved and familiar photo subject. There are 27 species and each can only exist in a symbiosis with a certain kind of anemone. The anemone offers the anemone fish a safe home within its stinging tentacles. But the fish on the other hand will also vigorously defend the anemone from its potential attackers. Do not be surprised if a little fellow will venture up to you and nip your fingers. They usually patrol only up to 2 meters away from the anemone. Unlike most human households, the biggest fish in each community is always a female and is the boss. All other fish are males. Should the female die, the largest male will turn into a female and then become the new boss. This magnificent animal is related to the scorpion fish. The flamboyantly decorated spines are also poisonous. Unlike the scorpion fish, however, the lionfish will attack frontally by spreading its dorsal fin and using this as a weapon if it feels cornered. Divers often cannot imagine that these beautiful and graceful creatures are capable of such a violent high-speed defensive reaction. By always maintaining a respectful distance, however, you will never encounter this extreme response. A lot of divers usually only become aware of scorpion fish when they are about to hold on to something and it suddenly moves. These masters of disguise have several poisonous spines which are located on their dorsal, belly and anal fins. Scorpion fish are one of the reasons to always be careful about what you touch underwater. It only takes them seconds to change their color and appear to turn into a stone. When threatened, they raise their spines to protect themselves. Scorpion fish lie on the bottom motionless waiting for their prey to swim right in front of their mouths. The unsuspecting fish suddenly find themselves sucked into a hungry stomach from which there is only one way out. All of the over 50 species of sea snakes have evolved from Australian land snakes. These air-breathing reptiles have lungs that go all the way to their tail, enabling them to stay underwater for at least half an hour and to dive down to depths of 200 meters. Even though they are the most venomous snakes on our planet, they are normally not aggressive towards humans and there is no recorded instance of a diver fatality from a sea snake bite. In rare cases, a curious sea snake might become interested in its own reflection in a diver's mask and come uncomfortably close. In this case, one should never lash out or make hasty movements but instead calmly turn away. Morays have an undeserved reputation for being aggressive. 
This is due to them constantly opening and closing their mouths, which are full of sharp teeth. All they are actually doing is sucking water through the mouth into the gills to breathe. They are not dangerous. Morays are found mostly hidden in holes. They have bad eyesight, but have an excellent sense of smell, which they use when they go out to hunt at night. These creatures are not known to attack humans except in places where they are fed by divers. Sometimes they might confuse a diver's hand with food and unintentionally bite it. The largest species can get up to four meters long. Made up of 95% water and just 5% organic materials, jellyfish belong to some of the most versatile and least understood species of animals on the planet. We call anything soft, transparent, tentacled, and with no skeletal structure, jellyfish. There are thousands of jellyfish species, some very small to ones with 50 meter long tentacles. Most species of jellyfish are actually harmless to humans. There are, however, kinds that possess cells that sting painfully. From afar, it is hard to know whether a jellyfish is of the stinging kind or not, so it is a good idea just to stay as far as possible from them. You can use vinegar to wash off the stinging cells and prevent painful blistering. These are the infamous starfish that can eat up a healthy coral reef and leave fields of dead coral behind. It is not known exactly what causes the crown of thorns plague. A popular theory says that overcollection of the triton shell, which is its only natural enemy, is the cause. Their 11 to 20 arms as well as their body are covered with long poisonous spines which can inflict painful wounds. Underwater, crown of thorns are extremely hard to kill. Like some monster from a horror film, any cut off body parts will grow into a whole new starfish. The best option to clear an affected reef is to remove them from the water. There are 37 species of triggerfish but the titan trigger is one of the largest. It is generally a peaceful animal, but while it is guarding its eggs, it will not allow any creature to approach the nest. Every year for a couple of weeks, Titan Triggerfish dig out a nest in the sand and guard it fanatically. Should you ever see a Titan Trigger hovering above a round hole in the sand, with head down and watching its surroundings with rolling eyes, do not approach. Divers ignoring these threatening signs will experience a warning attack. To retreat safely, the diver should move away from the nest. Otherwise, the fish will attack relentlessly with savage bites until the diver is driven away. White tip reef sharks are the most common sharks to be seen in the Philippines. They patrol their section of a reef at depths of between 100 meters all the way up to the surface. Seen from above, they have a very typical sinuous or snake-like way of swimming. White tips are often encountered resting on sandy slopes or inside of small caves. This will give you the opportunity to look right into their cat-like eyes and count the number of gill slits. Five. In spite of them letting you get close to them, in this situation do not attempt to touch them or to try to pull on their distinctive white tip tail. Philippines has the greatest variety of nudibranchs in the world. On almost any dive in this country, the observant diver will be able to see a few different examples. These naked snails have two little horns called rhinophores. The wavy cluster at the back are the gills. Their bright flashy colors serve as a warning to all predators that these seemingly defenseless creatures are highly poisonous to eat. Due to their distinctive coloration and unique special patterns, and the fact that they move slowly, nudibranchs are a highly sought after photo subject. When swimming away after taking your photo though, please take care that you don't kick up the sand because it might clog their gills. Have you ever wondered why white sand is so clean and pure? Sea cucumbers are like biological vacuum cleaners. Most species live on the bottom where they move about by stretching and contracting their bodies. They feed by taking in whatever is on the sea bottom and digesting all the organic particles. Et voila, out the back comes clean white sand. 
the giant sea cucumber can grow up to three meters long. Feather stars are very decorative and colorful. Although seemingly fragile, they've been around for millions of years. They usually have between 10 to 20 long and delicate feeding arms. These are like Velcro and are used to filter out plankton. While perched onto a sea fan or coral, a feather star will stretch out its arms into the current to feed. When not feeding, it will curl into a tight ball. If the current provides enough plankton, they will remain in the same spot for weeks. For many, the sea star is a symbol of the sea and its wonders. Most sea stars have five arms, but some species can have up to twenty. The underside of the arms have many tiny legs which end in suckers. These voracious predators even have enough strength to force clams open. Although slow walkers, they can also hunt down relatively large animals such as the octopus. Hermit crabs occupy any empty shell that they find suitable to their size. That is why you should not collect empty shells while diving. They never leave their shell unless moving into a larger one in order to always protect their vulnerable bodies from attackers. When in danger, hermits can retract completely into their shell sealing off the entrance with their largest pincer. Their eyes are located on rods which they can extend in order to scan the surroundings before they come out again. Shrimps are mostly tiny invertebrates recognizable by their hook-shaped bodies, multiple small legs, and long feelers. They are mostly night-active creatures that have specialized niches in the reef ecosystem. You can sometimes see them cleaning the mouths and gills of large predators like moray eels. Often they are found in a symbiosis, keeping anemones free of parasites. Due to the fact that there are over 8,000 species of shrimps, if you look very carefully in the most unlikely places of a reef, you will certainly encounter a shrimp. Of course, humans look for the ones that taste good and are at least bite-sized. Mike Tyson, watch out! Mantis shrimp pack the most powerful punch in the animal kingdom. Large individuals in captivity have even been known to punch a hole through thick aquarium glass. They can swim using their tails, but usually just run along the bottom on three pairs of legs. Some species hunt by using their specialized front legs as clubs to crack open the shells of crabs and other invertebrates. Others have evolved a spear-like appendage in order to catch fish. An octopus has eight arms, which are also used for tasting, smelling, and feeling its surroundings. Each of these incredibly strong arms has up to 240 suckers. It can camouflage itself perfectly by changing the color and texture of its skin at an incredible speed. This ability can also be used to express emotions such as fear or lust. It is a means of communication with each other during courtship. An octopus usually walks along the bottom using its arms. In an emergency, it can speed away using water jet propulsion and ejecting a screen of black ink as a distraction. This invertebrate has no bones, which is why it can squeeze through cracks that are tiny compared to its body size. An octopus only lives to a maximum of three years. Very closely related to the octopus is the cuttlefish. It is also amazingly intelligent and possesses excellent eyesight through its beautiful golden eyes. One major difference is that the cuttlefish does not walk along the sea bottom. Instead, it has a streamlined shape for swimming. Another difference is that the cuttlefish has 10 arms instead of 8. Being very curious creatures, cuttlefish sometimes interact with divers, if they feel like it, by gesturing with their arms and changing colors. When this happens, it's as if it's trying to tell us something we should know. If they don't feel like fooling around with divers, they'll camouflage themselves so well that they won't be found. Jacks are some of the most voracious hunters in the ocean. They are also known as trevelis or mackerels. 
They are frequently to be seen in schools, but occasionally one can meet solitary large animals. These can be extremely interested in everything happening around them. Sometimes they follow divers around during the whole dive. This can give us the impression that they have nothing better to do and that there is nothing good on fish TV. These pelagic hunters are the marathon swimmers among fish. Tunas never stop swimming and they never sleep. Unlike most fish, they can raise their body temperature in order to increase their performance. Tunas are commonly encountered in groups of between 3 to 20 individuals. The species of dogtooth tuna is sometimes confused with white tip reef sharks due to the white spot on its fin and its similar size. When barracudas are young, they can be found in schools of hundreds of individuals. As they get older, the schools get smaller. Schools of young barracuda are harmless. Even in the strongest currents, these sleek torpedo-shaped hunters hang out above the reef without obvious effort. Barracudas are curious and may circle divers to take a closer look. Being surrounded by so many barracudas that all you see are silvery fish bodies, makes you feel as if you were a part of them. This is truly an unforgettable experience. Sea turtles are so well adapted to the water that unlike their cousins on land, they are not slow and clumsy. Instead, their legs have developed into fins which propel them rapidly and gracefully through the aquatic environment. The majority of their time is spent underwater resting in small caves or searching among corals for jellyfish, plants, and invertebrates to eat. However, being reptiles, they must periodically surface to breathe. Do not imitate ignorant divers who hitch rides on turtles. Holding on to a turtle can cause it to panic. Be aware that a panicked turtle might swim so deep that it can drown. If you glimpse a fast movement out of the corner of your eye while swimming along a sandy slope, chances are it is a blue spotted stingray. If they haven't buried themselves in the sand, you can also find them hiding under a coral head. Marble rays, on the other hand, seem to prefer resting inside the small ledges of steep walls. You can then approach them easily, but don't get too close, otherwise you will bother them. Next up in size are the eagle rays. They have distinctive white spots on their back and a cow-like head. These magnificent diamond-shaped animals are extremely graceful swimmers. But don't be mistaken, they can accelerate out of sight in seconds. One of the ultimate experiences in diving has to be the encountering of the largest of rays, the manta. Due to its two horns, it used to be called the fish of the devil. Today, divers worship this fish for the graceful and elegant way it flies through the water and also for its size. Size does matter. Sharks are perfect killing machines. They had already evolved to be the ultimate predators in the oceans even before the dinosaurs. Seeing a shark in motion is witnessing a force of nature. Humans unfortunately have an unreasonable fear of these creatures caused by media and films. Did you know that every year more people are killed by hippos than by sharks? They may look dangerous, but we are not on their food list. On the other hand, shark fin soup is still on the menu of many Asian restaurants. Water with bad visibility is often not nice for us but that is where we would be likely to bump into a whale shark. The largest fish in the world feeds on the smallest creatures, plankton. This gentle giant swims slowly just below the surface and out of curiosity will approach humans. But don't be afraid. In spite of its impressive size, it is totally harmless. It cannot even defend itself except by swimming away. Being able to swim with a whale shark is like a dream come true. Wow, I really enjoyed that. The animals I have just shown you are only a few of the uncountable species out there. 
You will see so many more during your dives, and I hope to have sparked your interest and made you more aware of what the real hidden treasures are in the sea. For more background information about marine life and dive sites around the Philippines, please check out our websites. We would also be very happy to receive your feedback, which will help us to improve the following edition of this video field guide. Above all, dive safely. The anemone, the anemone, the anemone offers the ane anemone fish. Okay. The anemone offers the anemone fish a safe home within its. Anemone. The anemone offers the anem the anemone the anemone fish. The anemone offers the an. A small break before you start again. You know, just for the editing. The anemone offers the anemone anemone fish a safe home within its stained tentacles. But the fish on the other hand, I've had enough. I've had it. Sorry, Jack, I've had it.